Hello everyone, in this video I'll be talking about remembering the kanji, also known as the Heisik method. If you don't know, this method consists in teaching the Japanese characters using little stories. About a year ago, I uploaded my most watched video so far, which is how I learned kanji in five months. And I think that the success of the video tends to indicate that either people are struggling with kanji and they're looking for a fast and effective way to be done with it, or that people are already looking into the Heisik method and they want to know more about it. And I also suspect a sizable portion of people just clicked on the video because they thought it was talking crap. I've been studying the Japanese language for about 19 months now, and I think that I now have a solid foundation to properly assess the Heisik method. And in this video, I will address your most asked questions, like does it make sense to start learning Japanese by learning only the meaning of the radicals? In the first video I uploaded about the Heisik method, I told you that in the introduction to the book, the author explains that the method is based on the latest research on memory retention, which suggests that the human brain remembers information faster and more effectively when it is associated with a visual or an auditory stimulus. Actually, the author goes as far as saying that by using this method, you'll be done with kanji in a matter of weeks at most. Obviously, when reading this, you tend to think that this method must work for everybody. However, after talking with some of you, it appears that it doesn't. I think this is further proof that when it comes to learning, there's no one-size-fits-all type of strategy, but the problem is that the people I spoke with just said that they couldn't remember the stories but didn't really provide a reason why the method didn't work beyond saying that they just can't remember the stories. What I personally love about this method is that it's progressive and it breaks down everything into smaller units, which means that you have time to get used to the logic behind the characters, which was and still is really helpful to me. Some of you told me that you just repeat kanji every day and that you remember them like that. This is great uh, if it works for you. However, I know this would not work for me because I need to understand how the radical was formed. And if you're the kind of person who needs to understand where something comes from, if you want your learning experience to be as logical as possible, and if you're the kind of person who has a visual memory, then I think this method would perfectly work for you. A lot of you asked whether the book teaches pronunciation, and I said no, explaining why the author made that decision. He says that because the Japanese characters have different readings, unlike the Chinese ones, it doesn't really make sense to provide all the three, four, five, whatever pronunciations of each character because it's already difficult to remember how to write them, it's difficult to remember the meaning. So if you're a complete beginner and you have to remember the radicals, the meanings, and on top of that, the readings, it would get overwhelming really fast. However, it is true that in most kanji compounds, the Chinese reading, the onyomi reading, is the most widespread. It's not always the case, but in a sizable portion of kanji compounds, the Chinese reading is used. So I suppose this is the reason why Heisek decided to write a second volume in which he teaches you the most widespread onyomi and kunyomi readings. I did not purchase that book because for me it makes more sense to directly dive into proper Japanese texts, and obviously the more you read, the easier it will be to remember the readings, but if you think this would help you, there's always that possibility. As you may know already, I used the French version of the book because French is my native language, and when I purchased the book, I really thought that the French version provided the exact same content as the English one. But after speaking with some of you, it turns out that it's not the case. Some of you said that you were disappointed in the English version because Heisek stops providing stories at about the 500-ish kanji, which obviously forces you to come up with your own stories if you want to go on using the same method. And I suppose this kind of takes time. On the contrary, the French version fails to provide stories for only about 10 characters or so, 
So the author of the French version, he accompanies you throughout the process, throughout the book, and he even sometimes provides really interesting cultural anecdotes, which helps you to memorize even better. So if you know French and you think this method is for you, then try to purchase the French version. After 19 months, I think that I have had enough time to properly assess the Hasek method, and I truly believe that it's a fantastic teaching method, especially if you're a visual person and you like some kind of logic when you're studying. I think that based on the elements I just provided you with, you're now in a position to properly determine whether or not this method is for you. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next one.